Honestly, I think this article is an extremely strong warning shot to Ray Fisher. Probably the strongest warning. I mean, look, they, the, the rap ran a clear hit piece uh, about a week or so ago. But I honestly feel that this is like, this is a turning point in the WB versus Ray Fisher situation. And I think that's why The Hollywood Reporter agreed to run this. Uh, I think it's from Warner Brothers, because Warner Brothers ain't playing. I think with this article, Warner Brothers is very clearly signaling Ray Fisher that if he wants to be part of the Snyder Cut going forward, from additional photography to the publicity campaign, he better just stop. Uh, and I'm sure the Snyder Cut team, by the way, does not appreciate being used as collateral. I'm sure, that, you know, they've had enough drama. They just want to they just want to tell their story, and we just want to watch it. Uh, and I think that by leveraging the Snyder Cut, that's going to put fans in a difficult position. I think it's, it's a clever move by Warner Brothers. It's a clever move. I'm going to talk about what I think Ray Fisher should do in a moment. But first, let's talk additional photography. Uh, now, when the Snyder Cut was officially announced back in May, I told you, I'd heard from my sources that there would be additional photography. Uh, even though many other scoopers insisted I was wrong and that Warner Brothers had only greenlit post-production completion of what had already been found. That is, as I told you, and as you can now see, wrong. I think it sucks that this is how it got out. This is how it got confirmed. But, you know, the, the Hollywood Reporter, they're going, before, they're, they're going before cameras for the Snyder Cut in October. So this October, right around the corner. It's so exciting. Woo! So what kind of additional photography are we talking about here? Uh, one thing I can tell you now is that half of the Green Lantern scene has been filmed. The Batman half. Ooh. So that means they just have to film the other half of the scene, which should be very easy to do with Green Lantern. He flies. He's got an electric. Well, we'll see what kind of suit Zack Snyder puts him in. But I have heard that he wants Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I think, you know, considering how important nostalgia is these days and that Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern came at it around the time that these other movies were coming out, I think it would be just absolutely perfect to do it that way. And Ryan Reynolds has been, you know, active on Twitter, signaling that he's open to this. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 again, as I've reported to you, this is what they want to happen. And so it would be great if Ryan Reynolds shows up there uh, in October and films the other half of that scene. That's why there can be some... Some of you have been like, but what about the, you know, the hints of who Green Lantern was back when the movie was being filmed? Well, that's because those scenes were not filmed. They are at least not in this, you know, with the Batman. I heard that the Green Lantern stuff has to be filmed. So they could swap in Ryan Reynolds. And you know, that other guy, as I've said before, Zack Snyder is a prolific filmmaker. He can, you can give that actor another opportunity. I think that, you know, that you want stuff that gets people talking about the Snyder Cut, that makes it must-see every week. It's four one-hour episodes, and as I told you, a little extra, extra something afterwards uh, each week. And I think having Ryan Reynolds show up one week as Green Lantern and redeeming himself, I mean, it's just a perfect story, is fantastic. And again, I think, I believe that's why Zack Snyder and his team want that. Now, I've also heard they want to do some more filming of the Martian Manhunter elements and uh, more scenes with the rest of the Justice League, including Cyborg. As Zach said in, his interview, in my interview with him, he is making his ideal four-hour Justice League, and this additional photography is to make that happen. So again, it's to pick up some things that they didn't get to do before the unfortunate situation that happened with Warner Brothers and uh, Jeff Johns replaced, we'll talk about Jeff Johns in a moment. Jeff Johns is the one who replaced him with Joss Whedon. Uh, that was all Jeff Johns. Um, and so Zach didn't get to finish principal photography. So this would not only allow him to do that, but to tweak it and make it again, the thing, you know, his ideal version of Justice League. I think that's just fantastic. So does Ray Fisher need to be a part of the, this additional photography? Well, Zach has said he is the heart of his film. But who knows how much of Cyborg's storyline is already in the can. From my sources, I haven't heard what, what this case is with Cyborg and what needs to be shot. Uh, I'm sure, though, that no matter what is going on with additional photography, Ray Fisher would like to be part of the publicity campaign. But you can understand why Warner Brothers, from their perspective, doesn't want to hand him a microphone right now. Uh, so look, let me just say, what, what do I think of the controversial part of this story? Well, it's all controversial, but what do I think of the Warner Brothers versus Ray Fisher situation? They have a common enemy here, man. I don't 
don't know why everybody wants to die on the hill that is Jeff Johns, both Ray Fisher and Warner Brothers. I mean, it's crazy that anybody would risk anything for this guy. I've had four different people come to me independently at this point, you know, privately, who don't know each other. They all approach me because of my ongoing coverage. So it's been over the course of my talking about how horrible Jeff Johns is. And all of these people came to me and they said, he is a nightmare and he is responsible for derailing our careers. You know, it makes me sad that Zack Snyder, if he, I was just talking to somebody, in fact, this weekend, we had a very nice conversation about, well, we had a, it was a pleasant conversation between the two of us, but the things he, the things I heard about Jeff Johns, whoo, it's even, I thought it was really, it got even worse. Um, but the fact that Zack Snyder, if he had never run into Jeff Johns, he never would have had to go through all of this. It's just, it's mind blowing and quite sad. And apparently that's, how, that's been the case for a lot of people. Everyone should stay away from Jeff Johns, career wise. I think it's, it's a disaster. So someone from the creative area has come to me. Someone from the executive branch has come to me. Someone in publicity has come to me. And someone from DC Comics has come to me. You know, someone who worked um, as a suit there. And they, I also heard from these people, Jeff Johns has been reported to human resources by other people uh, and that people who even worked for him on Stargirl, which was well received. But I, all, I heard from two different people. One person told me that Jeff Johns had no idea what he was doing with Stargirl, and it's a miracle the show turned out so great because he was really holding it back and was just way in over his head and wouldn't admit it. And then I heard from another person that most of the people on that show hate him. They just can't stand working with him. One of these people even described Jeff Johns to me as a functioning sociopath. Can you believe it? I mean, look, I'm glad that Walter Hamada and the higher ups have had a good experience with Johns. I'm not surprised because he works for them. Jeff Johns only, you know, blows shit downward. Uh, but they should realize that he is universally hated by everyone that he works for. I mean, I really think they should take a moment, take a pause, go say, hey guys, we liked working with Jeff Johns, but you know, safe space. You know, I guess that's, you know, maybe this is what Ray Fisher wants out of his investigation, but he should clarify that. We'll talk about Ray Fisher in a moment. But I think if they were to have like someone to, to, to do like anonymous conversations with people, they would find out that pretty much everyone who's ever worked for Jeff Johns hates him. And then they'd be like, why are we fighting for this guy? And we wouldn't have to go through all this. As for Ray Fisher, he's done it. Jeff Johns' career is finished. Jeff Johns will never be able to go, another, go to another convention or do another interview. Uh, I mean, Joss Whedon had to cancel his Comic-Con appearance and you're never gonna see Jeff Johns again. And I'm pretty sure that most fans will no longer flock to his work in comics or TV. Am I gonna boycott Jeff Johns' comics and television? You know, I don't, I don't even think that's necessary. I mean, he's fading away. Jeff Johns is done. Pick what you like. I don't think people will run to it like they once did, but I'm reading Three Jokers. You know, I'm, uh, he's, uh, he's been a producer on Doom Patrol. I'm still watching that. Uh, but you know, the emperor, you know, has no clothes. Everybody sees him now for what he is. And, and I just, he's just going to fade away. I admire, I really admire Ray Fisher's accountability over entertainment equation that he signs his tweets with. But now he has to decide if he also feels that accountability is over career. Now he has said to date that it is. He said he's willing to make that sacrifice. And if Fisher does continue with this fight, I urge him to explain why he's come forward now. Warner Brothers is accusing him of being mercenary and upset with script changes. Very, very strong accusations that have had weight within Hollywood. So Fisher really needs to offer a counter argument to those. I mean, they're very damning. And, also, I, bought, and I totally believe Ray Fisher, by the way, with what happened with Jeff Johns. I really do. I told you I shared the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman story. It's, you know, it was bad. And, and Jason Momoa is backing him up. But I think that, again, I think that this is out there now. And so that's what, what was needed to be done. And I think that also if Ray Fisher continues, I think he needs to be really clear about what he wants to happen here. What's his end game? Because Joss Whedon, John Berg, and Jeff Johns have all been fired from DC Films already. And their careers, again, they're circling the drain. Like really, like they're dead. Stop kicking them. Like they're dead. I, want, I think that it would help his argument if Fisher would talk about why he came for, again, why he came forward now, why did he wait so long, why, why now, okay? Well, he has, to, he has to offer an alternate timeline to the one Warner Brothers is putting forward, because again, it's damning. And then he needs to say specifically what he wants to happen going forward, because Warner Brothers is like, what do you want, all of us to go? I mean, I, I think that I would urge Ray Fisher not to make an enemy of Warner Brothers. You know, you guys should focus on a common enemy, and that's Jeff Johns. It's real simple. 
cut them out, go, let them go on his merry way, uh, live his life. And then everybody, all the rest of us can move on because now it's infected. It's, it's, it, it created the need for the Snyder Cut in the first place. And now it's putting it in danger again. I, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Personally, personally, I feel that Ray Fisher has accomplished what he set out to do. And the next step for him should be to deliver an amazing performance to Cyborg in the Snyder Cut and to make sure that he can do that from the additional photography to being on that publicity campaign. It's going to be a nightmare either way because everyone's going to ask why he's not there. So that's going to be, um, we, do we really want this surrounding the Snyder Cut? I don't want the Snyder Cut conversation to be about whether or not Ray Fisher is on the publicity tour. I want it to be a celebration of Zack Snyder's ideal four-hour Justice League. That's what it should be. So I think that everybody should be working towards that at this point. I think this really needs to get wrapped up. So, and I, and I think it would benefit uh, Ray Fisher. Let him be a huge hit off of that, this whole thing. Let him be a huge hit off of the, his work in the Snyder Cut and the interviews that he gives so that Warner Brothers has no choice to continue with the character. Although I got to tell you, it's like pulling teeth getting more Henry Cavill Superman, even though all the fans have said that's what they want. But I told you, Warner Brothers doesn't like him, although Henry Cavill has been difficult. Although, who's really so difficult that at this point you wouldn't be like, well, people love him that much. I mean, he's had other successes, Mission Impossible, The Witcher. I feel, let's just go. You don't have to visit him on set. Let him be someone else's problem. Tell tell Danny Garcia to manage him, right? He, she wasn't his manager back then. So I'd be like, hey, Danny, I better not have him be a problem on set. I'm trusting you. And I'm sure Danny Garcia would be like, don't worry, I can take Henry Cavill. She is a, a tough person in every every use of the word. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I would do. And I mean, Henry Cavill, even though he's not getting a lot, of, he's you know, you know, Superman is hopefully you know we've I've reported and you've seen it from other places reporting that he's moving forward maybe with a Shazam and Black Adam cameo. But even beyond DC, Henry Cavill has gotten other great work, and Ray Fisher could too, as long as he does as long as he's a part of the Snyder Cut. I think that's really really important for him. I think again again and again, I think that Ray Fisher doesn't have to feel that he gave in or anything. I feel that he accomplished what he needed to. Everyone will remember accountability over entertainment. Everyone knows about Jeff Johns. Everyone knows. And I think now next we want to see Ray Fisher succeed. So what do you think should be done at this point? Like honestly, and like you just have to like think what what what's your end game? I think that's also really important. Uh, I want to see Ray Fisher be successful and I want to see the Snyder Cup be successful. And I think Jeff Johns should be, you know, I think that if Ray Fisher just said, hey, I just want Jeff Johns out of here. I think that maybe that, that would be that would be something that people, I think that once it was revealed that Jeff Johns and John Berg put out a fake press release about the Jason Momoa uh, Frosty movie, I don't know how they still have a leg to stand on over there, quite frankly, at Warner Brothers. So I feel like everyone would be happy. All right, so again, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. <laughs>